or your friends are spending time with their fathers and you've not really had the chance to do so. So, you know, he's still my father, I still love him. You know, I think he gets out in 2025, 26, and the one thing he said to me, which he could have asked for anything, he says, literally all I want now is to just travel the world and watch you play football. He says, that's literally all I want, I don't want anything else. Just give me that and I'm happy. That's giving me goosebumps, <laughs> you saying that then. My guest today is Calvin Phillips. For the, for the Euros uh, 2020, you know, we saw three members of the squad, um, Rashford, Sancho, Saka, mm -hmm. receive racial abuse after the final. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly on social media, it has to be said. Yeah. You condemned it at the time. Mm -hmm. How important is it to have that sense of solidarity between the players? You know, When something like that happens, to sort of stand up and, and say that it's wrong? I think it's really important, not just for, not just for the players to say it as well, but like the whole of England, you know, to come out, the FA and stuff, to come out and say and condemn it all. I think it was just to show, you know, support for them and show that, you know, they have got people who are, you know, looking out for them and, you know, want to make sure they feel all right about everything, even though, you know, it's probably the worst few, few weeks of your life mm -hmm. at the time. And, you know, I can't imagine what all three of them would have gone through. So, you know, for me, it was just, you know, to show, you know, that I support them and, you know, the great lads as well. And, you know, for them to be racially abused after giving everything for the country, you know, I think it was definitely out of order, but... Um, it's rotten, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's just so annoying. And it's one of the main reasons why I came out and spoke to it was, you know, just to educate young kids as well, you know, that it's not the right thing to do. And, um, you know, if, we can, if I can stop one kid from being racist, then, you know, hopefully it goes on and goes on and goes on, so... It's worth doing, yeah. Yeah. Of course it is. Um, you said to the Yorkshire Evening Post, this, this is a quote, that not many people know that you're black. Um, but some of your friends and family, and again a quote, can't even walk down the street without being given a dirty look or worse. Mm -hmm. How has sort of colorism, that kind of prejudice between you know someone who's darker skinned and someone lighter skinned, how did that factor in? Well, not just your experience, but also sort of post-tournament for you. Did it make things easier because you weren't getting as much stick as perhaps some of the other guys were or did it make it harder because you know you sort of you got the same experience but you're not being as abused as badly maybe it makes you feel i don't know i don't want to put words in your mouth guilty or no nah, yeah you literally but you hit the nail on the head it's it makes you feel worse because you know I've, i'm over some mixed race so all these lads that are getting stick well why am i not getting stick and i feel for them because you know just because of the skin colour they're getting abused because you know we didn't win a game and you know why if you're going to abuse you know three players then why not abuse the rest of us and um, you know I wouldn't say I was I was lucky in a way not to receive it but you know because people don't know it that I'm mixed race and you know maybe they just didn't didn't bother with me because they didn't think I was so it's, it's a weird one it really is and um it's, yeah, it's, it's a proper weird one, but... It kind of highlights highlights how stupid it is as well. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's so... I don't even know the word to it. It's, it's just so stupid. It's ignorant. It's, yeah, ignorant. It's so, it's just so ignorant, and um, that's why I just don't understand. It's just... It's very annoying. Yeah. Well, let's not spend too much time talking about <laughs> this, this nasty stuff, because there's good, you know, there's good stuff here as well. So, just one last question on England, which I, I've I've always wondered, sort of, you know... Like I said earlier, you think about when you're younger, like playing sport for your country, what mm -hmm. it feels like to be out on the pitch, national anthem or whatever, you're stood there with the jersey on. Could you try and describe that feeling for me? You know. <laughs> it's very, it's so hard. It's so hard. I think, obviously, you know, one of my, fir my first games and stuff, I was very nervous, but then during the Euros, I was just loving every minute of it. I was loving... You know, just being around the boys, watching the country come together to support us, and um, you know, you know, more fans were all started being allowed back into the stadium and stuff. And even for the World Cup, you know, I wasn't involved in the, you know, the World Cup as much as what I'd like to be because of my injuries. But the atmosphere at the w the Wales game was unbelievable. It was unbelievable, and you get goosebumps. You know, when you stood there and you, the national anthem and stuff, you just get goosebumps. And you know, it's some of that every young kid. You know, dreams of doing is playing for the country, and especially that, especially that I woke up. Mm -hmm. um, um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, we've got the Euros in a year's time, so hopefully, I'm doing that again.
your other parent mentioned in your intro, mm -hmm. in the intro, your dad, mm -hmm. um, who was in and out of prison a lot yep. in your childhood. What effect did that have on your relationship with him when you were younger? Um, I don't think it had, it didn't have a bad effect on it because, you know, he's still my father, I still love him. Like, he's my father as well, so it's just the fact that obviously it was limited time where we would get to see him and we'd be able to speak to him for, you know, a couple of weeks at a time or, you know, a couple of months at a time. And um, and then, you know, you kind of grow up and you're growing up or your friends are, you know, with their fathers and, you know, spending time with their fathers and you've not really had the chance to do so. So, um, but yeah, obviously, you know, me and my dad have a great relationship. We speak to each other um, occasionally and, you know, I went to go see him a couple of months ago and, um, you know, it was, it was literally like he'd never been away because we have that same, we have that same talk. We speak about football, we have a laugh, we ask how our family's doing and stuff like that. And, you know, it's like he's never been away, but obviously, you know, the real picture is that he's been away for quite a while. And, um, you know, I think he gets out in 2025, 20, 26. And, you know, I said to him, one of my first conversations when I went to go see him, I said, oh, I want to help you when you get out. Um, to be more secure and um, to not go back into prison. And the one thing he said to me, which he could have asked for anything, he says, literally all I want now, he says, to just travel the world and watch you play football. He says, that's literally all I want. I don't want anything else. Just give me that and I'm happy. So, so yeah. That's giving me goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> you saying that then. Yeah. Um, so, when you're younger, we were talking about, we were talking about your mum, like shielding you a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. from the difficulty that she had then. Mm. So, this might sound like a slightly weird question, but did you know where he was? Did you know he was in prison or did your mum kind of try to protect you from that a little bit when you were younger as well? I knew times when, obviously when I was younger, we used to go visit him all the time in prison and stuff. But then even when he'd come out, he'd go missing for like, you know, a month at a time and then come back and be like, oh, where have you been? But um, but yeah, I think, you know, there were times where when you'd not seen him for maybe longer than a month, then you kind of knew that he was going back in prison. You'd gone back into prison or whatever. And then I think my mum would just tell us, "Oh, you know, we we'll have to go see your dad. He's he's gone back in prison now." Um, and we'd all just be like, "Oh, for God's sake!" Um, <laughs> not, not again. Not again. <laughs> 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 but but yeah, but yeah. That's to be honest. You know, this documentary is about me trying to inspire the younger generation. But like, it's also, you know, I know that my dad had a very difficult childhood when he grew up and. Um, you know, his decisions that he's made is from not having a great childhood and, you know, he went into care and stuff like that. So it's not been easy for him either. So, um, you know, just, just yeah, my dad's, a, my dad's a good guy in his own way. And, um, yeah, I can't wait for him to get out. So I think it's important, though, to to show that side of things because, mm -hmm. you know, it's very, it'd be very easy to just, like, you know, not talk about it or, mm -hmm. you know, pretend it didn't happen. And yeah. actually, it's quite powerful to show people that you know life is messy life is difficult yeah. it's never as simple as you know oh yeah i just started playing football and made it all the way to the top yeah you know it's ne ob obviously it's never like that anyway yeah. but you, you know what i'm saying it's yeah. like it's actually i think you know there'll be people who perhaps themselves are in a pretty difficult situation and they see something like that and where you got to in spite of it, mm -hmm. it can be quite inspiring yeah i think so and i think that's another reason why i wanted to do the documentary i wanted to inspire you know, whoever watched it, I wanted to make sure they felt inspired by, you know, my story and, you know, no matter where you're from, what situation you've been in in the past, what situation you could go through in the future, um, you know, whatever you, put, whatever you put your mind to, if you work hard enough and you have the right people around you to support you, then, you know, you know the sky's the limit, really. Mm -hmm. I, I want to pick up as well on something you, you mentioned a little bit earlier. You said... um that you didn't really have a father figure there at mm -hmm. the time because he was away. Did how did how did that experience sort of impact your how you perceive like being a man? You know, if if you don't have you know a dad there all the time to look up to and you mm -hmm. know, sort of be like a guiding light, how did that experience change being sort of a positive male role model and and that sort of thing for you? Um, I think it was just I think it was just you know whenever I got a chance to interact with you know kids and stuff. And even like me and my girlfriend speak about it now, like whenever we have kids, I'm never going to not be with my kids, you know what I mean? Because I know how I felt when I was younger when, you know, I did see my dad for a few months and and stuff like that. But I think, 
you know, with me, if you ever see me interact with kids and, you know, talk to kids and young fans, like I go out my way to do everything that I can for them because I know exactly how it feels when, you know, you want to say hello to somebody, you want to say hello to like a footballer you see maybe at a shopping centre or something and then you don't really say it because you're too scared or too shy. So mm-hmm. I just try and, you know, speak to them like I'm a normal person because that's what I am. Yeah. Um, make them feel very comfortable and, you know, just be a highlight of the day. Maybe if they're in me, you know, they say, oh, go home and tell their friend, oh, I think Alvin Phillips in. Hey, let me have a picture of his talks and stuff like that. So I just like to, you know, just show, you know, appreciation for all, all the fans that obviously look up to me and as a role model and stuff like that. Mm. I guess the other side of it as well is, yeah, okay, maybe there's not necessarily like that father figure there, mm-hmm. but there are plenty of strong women in your life mm-hmm. that have sort of, you know, stepped, you know, talk about your gran, talk about your mum, mm-hmm. what they went through for you. Yeah. And that, you know, just because perhaps someone's dad isn't there doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't role models, that there aren't people for them to look up to. And actually the sort of, the strength of women in doing that is, you know, it's, it's really evident in the film as well. Yeah, I think, you know, like you see in the documentary, my, the women are so important in my life. Um, and they've done an amazing job at being both, you know, mother and father figures. And, um, but for me as well, um, you know, the father figures that I've had, not father figures, but, you know, somebody who had, you know, not, it's been my head coaches who, you know, I've been playing football under and stuff like that. Like I've always wanted to, make sure I'm doing everything right in my own way so I'm not disappointing them and stuff like that. So whenever I've had a coach for like, you know, a couple of years, because at least it was changing managers every two months, so it was hard to do that. <laughs> but when um, Bielsa came in, he was like he was like a granddad figure, basically. And Godfather. Yeah, I'd do everything possible, to, you know, obviously to make him happy and make his life easier um, at the training ground and I'd always want to impress him and he's weird it sounds a little bit weird but it's like my fa- my father figures were kind of coming from you know the managers who you know spending basically every day with at mm-hmm. the football at the football ground and stuff like that so so yes yeah, it's, it's a bit weird one but 